Welcome back. Over the past year, we've had a few of these handhelds, and at $150, the sweet spot was the Retro Pocket 3 Plus. It ran all PSP games and even touched on PS2 and GameCube. In Asia, we've had to wait a full year until the Steam Deck was released. So how is the Steam Deck by Commodore? Welcome to Team Pandori. Subscribe. It's the postman. What's this? We have a box. And inside this box is another box. Time for a boxing match. This one here has six sides and multiple warning labels. Oh dear. And another one, lithium battery. The box is sealed with a strip of sellotape. And the inside, we have this. In case of emergency, place your head in between your legs and say howdy there, Woody. Howdy ho, it's a quick guide. This here is the main attraction. And it wouldn't surprise me if they sold like this in a shop. We're actually more surprised that we got a case with this. Honestly, I was not expecting that. Your games are going places! Let's have a quick look around here. And open her up. As we mentioned, this Steam Deck comes with a case, and it feels very premium. But it's locked, so we'll check it later. This other box here has the power adapter included. And this Chiconi adapter is 100 to 240 volts, so you can use it around the world. The manual's in multiple languages, filled with many words. Let's give this a snip. Wow, <laughs> that looks beautiful. So the case is molded for the Steam Deck, and there's no places to add headphones or anything like that. The Steam Deck has a 1610 seven inch screen, and outside the regular D-pad, we have these two track pads. We also have dual analog sticks, as well as the usual buttons. The bottom right button here is for options, and the Steam button is to bring up Steamy options. Along the top we have a headphone jack, two buttons for volume, area for exhaust, USB for power, and the on and off button. We have four stacked shoulder buttons, two of them analog triggers. At the bottom, micro SD card slot, and on the back, four more buttons. When holding this device, it is very comfortable. And even with its size, it does not feel heavy. Here's the D-pad. Bit like the one from an Xbox 360. And the same goes for the buttons. Just a little smaller. Analog sticks feel very smooth. And they also click. Buttons in the back are low travel. The triggers feel good. And the shoulder buttons click. Time for the size comparison. Here's the Miu Mini. A Pow Kitty V90. A PSP 2000. The Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. The RG 353 VS. A Nintendo Switch. And a Roybush tea bag. The screen of the Steam Deck is six Roybush tea bags large. Nice. We tried turning it on. But there's no battery power, so we had to stick it in good. Thank you, John. For the first boot, it took a while, and we kind of thought it was broken until I <sighs> scared the crap out of me. I think you need new underpants. Initial setup is quite simple. Choose the language, time zone, and then the Wi-Fi. I'll then finish up the installation for SteamOS and then ask us for our Steam username and password. If you don't have one, you can create a new account, then we can sign in. It then gives us a quick tutorial so we can learn the ropes in a very short amount of time. And it also reminds me that this thing is touchscreen. Now that the setup is out of the way, we can use this like a Steam handheld. Steam is an online marketplace for games. Many are free, and for those that are not, they go on sale all the time. To install the games, we need to have it in our library and then hit install. As to the question, how many games can fit on our 64GB Steam Deck? Well, the answer is not that many. SteamOS takes its share, we only have 37GB for our games. If you want an idea of how many fit on, hmm, here's what we have. If you want some more space, a very cheap and affordable solution is to use a microSD. We also made a video tutorial showing how to buy and upgrade the internal SSD. It's quite simple to achieve, but it may void your warranty. I'd like 
to void Council of Troy's warranty. All computers are different, so we'll need to know which games are compatible with our Steam Deck. So at the bottom right there is a little icon displaying if it works with the Steam Deck or not. Let's get into the game testing. First up is a favourite, Another World. And even though it says it's okay for the Steam Deck, um, not a great start. Let's try another classic game, the Chaos Engine. So the D-pad doesn't seem to work, and with the stick, only up and down is functional. We tried remapping with Steam, and this is how far we got. Left doesn't work. It's on Commander Keen. The King of Fighters 98, Ultimate Match, Final Edition. While the D-pad is no arcade stick, Hadouken style moves are easy enough to pull off. When it comes to games that are natively compatible with Xbox style pads, the Steam Deck runs with no issues. Castle Crashes is a good example of a 16-9 game. We can stretch it out to full screen, but even as is, not much of the screen is going to waste. Same goes for Street to Rage 4. And the absolutely gorgeous Cuphead. Sonic Mania shows the vibrant display. And even though the resolution is not 1080p, we find this a marvel to look at. Now when it comes to games that need to use the mouse, there's a learning curve when using the trackpad. It has a very unusual haptic feedback that feels like you're rolling around a ball. Oh, and uh, we've forgotten how to play FTL. One game we haven't forgotten how to play is Command & Conquer Red Alert. Shake your baby. And if you wondered about Civilization VI, the 4-core 8-thread AMD handles it rather well. But I know you'd rather be thinking about becoming bread. Or maybe a goat. Or perhaps you'd rather just roll a ball. And while we played this, it made us realize how good the stereo speakers are on the Steam Deck. Playing FPS games initially feels a bit awkward, as we found the analog sticks are a bit too high and out of the way. But don't forget we can always use a trackpad to act like a mouse. CSGO runs at a decent frame rate, but for the controls, it seems that the devs threw everything at the fence hoping that something would stick. The analogs have a dead zone and seem clunky. The trackpads are precise but fiddly, and the gyro controls, well, they're added, but they're just terrible. For CSGO, stick to the mouse and keyboard. We were surprised to see that even the most recent games worked. Here's Metal Gear Solid 5. But when it comes to fighting around the world, there's nothing better than Yakuza 0. And karaoke. When it comes to Linux, emulating systems may be quite alien to you. But with its free tool, EmuDeck, it's surprisingly easy to get all of your emulation goods right there in your Steam library. Already there are plenty of video tutorials on this, but we'll leave you a link down below. So here's my decky deck. And in the collections, you can see we've got Amiga, Arcade, and all the rest. As you see, we don't have all the pictures downloaded yet, but this works great. Classic games like Lotus Turbo Challenge 2 can scale up really well using most of the 1610 screen. 
So Mega Drive. Sega Saturn. Sega Dreamcast. And if you want to push the limits of the Dreamcast, here's Yu Suzuki's Gameworks. Sega Naomi. Moving on to N64, we've got GoldenEye. But I prefer F-Zero X. Yeah, boost power. How about some GameCube? With one of the most difficult games to emulate, F-Zero GX. And all of the gameplay shown here is at stock settings. If we wished, we could up performance by raising the TDP settings, which is kind of similar to overclocking. Nintendo Wii. Moving on to the Sony systems, it's PlayStation 1. And of course, this runs PSP, no problems. And that even includes God of War Chains of Olympus. Next up is PS2, and this also runs great. Ridge Racer V. And Gran Turismo 4. And last up, Xbox. There are plenty of accessories available for the Steam Deck. These were sent to us by JSOX. This one's a screen protector with a matte finish, which can help us see the display rather than bright reflections coming off the screen. There's also a protective shell. This is pretty much like a layer of armor, and it has a stand at the back very much like a Nintendo Switch. It fits on very tight, and the added girth is not too noticeable in your hands. Unfortunately, the added size makes it difficult to fit into the official Steam Deck case, so while we cannot recommend this to everyone, it is still an option. This thing here is like a Switch dock. Your Steam Deck goes in here, and it looks like it's very comfortable. There's a 1 gigabit network port, and on the back we've got ports for HDMI 2 and a couple of USB 2s. The USB-C is for power, so we can charge our Steam Deck while playing it. Pop it under the TV, and we're golden. This is a good product, but one thing to note is if you're using the protective case, the Steam Deck won't fit very well. If you don't care about charging while playing on the TV, you can always use a USB-C to HDMI cable. As for other options, you can always use an external SSD or micro SD to install Windows or other form of Linux. Batacera had issues with the Bluetooth controller, and to get around this we used the Mayflash USB dongle. So now we have a Steam Deck with Batacera as a TV console. It's time for the pros and the cons. The Steam Deck is a powerful device that totally changes the handheld market. This is a premium product, and if you already have a Steam Games library, then this is a no-brainer. As it's a large and fairly heavy unit, we can't really say that it's a portable handheld. The Steam Deck is more a portable computer. The Steam Deck is a great device, and if you want to play current PC games on the move, we can happily recommend this. But if you only need a handheld for classic consoles up to PSP, then we'd say stick to a much cheaper and portable handheld like the Retro Pocket 3 Plus, 
or even the Mute Mini. As we close up, here's a big thank you to everyone on our Patreon. We appreciate all of your support, and we could not do this without you. Thank you. We create reviews, tutorials, and also work on Pandora, fixing those cheap arcade boxes, and the F Amateur Mini. That Steam Deck really is something. So you like it then? Yes, I got steamy with Beverly on my deck. Okay. And it was so large. Yeah, but it didn't seem as big or as long as the pictures were online. I have not seen anything that big since Commander Data dropped his trousers. <laughs> If you like the video, please hit the like and subscribe and bell. Catch you on the next one. ta -ra. <laughs> We can play a round of Quake later. I am John Lou. Lou. <laughs>